thought it would make sense to talk about infrastructure for agriculture and the integration of those two uh, systems, both architecture and agriculture. And if you think about it, ecological design very much falls in line with this. It's, it's a relationship between both the built environment and non-built environment. So I thought it would be good just to show some case studies that I've worked on in the past that bridge these two gaps. And then also think about infrastructure a little bit more broadly. What does that, what does infrastructure really mean? So we'll dive into that as well. Infrastructure doesn't necessarily mean physical infrastructure. It is also social infrastructure. And oftentimes there is physical infrastructure that supports social infrastructure. An easy example of that, for, for instance, is when we looked at the plant Chicago. They have a physical location, they have an infrastructure for supporting this agriculture system, but then they have the so social infrastructure of education programs, farmer's market, these activities that happen within this physical infrastructure. So we always want to be looking at how do these various, uh, both the built environment sort of support the social environment. And then how does that integrate with um, the natural environment, natural environment, as we've um, started to contest what natural really means. The first project here was one that I worked on while I was in undergraduate school. This was a design build project. So we did a design, made a proposal, and then as a group afterwards developed the design and actually built um, what we termed the, the solar garage charging station. So this garage is, at its essence, just a basic farming garage, but it has the added functionality of seed propagation. So not only does it hold farming equipment, keeps it out of the rain, but you can propagate seeds and then plant those seeds. In addition to that, there is solar panels that can charge a vehicle. So now you have a little truck that you can take around your farm and that doesn't emit gas, and you can use that to plant the seeds or uh, carry equipment. Any excess electricity would go back to the grid or charging the vehicle. So on the one hand, it starts off with a very practical, basic um, problem, which is, hey, we need a shed to, to store our equipment. And then it starts to layer these additional functionalities to the project, which in this case are supporting the ag agricultural efforts. These were some of my designs early on. One of my first designs, not very great, but I thought I would just include it just for fun. Taking a look at, there's just so many options for how something can be designed and built. But what's interesting about this is, yeah, the form might have been different, but the the essential sort of systems and elements and functionalities were all pretty similar across the different designs that were proposed. So most of the designs had a south-facing um, propagation wall or propagation side, and then um, that came off of this main space. And then also took a look at some natural ventilation techniques depending on the wind direction. So especially in a design build project like this, you can start to boil down the essential functions. And then depending on the capabilities of what's easy to build, reasonable, practical to build, then those can sort of start to be developed into a built project. This is a project that's um, more about social infrastructure. So although this couples at first, this was just a bus stop. So typical bus stop, there's a bench. You wait there. Maybe there uh, is some trash on the side. Uh, it's, it's generally not a desirable place to be. In this project, the essential pr premise was, okay, we have a bus stop. We can get infrastructure funding through um, infrastructure and transportation funding through making a bus stop. Now we can overlay this bus stop to now be a band stage. So this actually used the Tiger Grant, uh, a grant that was set off um, uh, from the Obama administration for transportation uh, infrastructure. So yeah, there's a bus stop, but now there's also a band stage and also bike paths that are incorporated into this project. 
So it becomes a transportation hub uh, where both you can wait for your bus, watch a band play, as well as um, get bike tune-ups or park your bike and uh, or connect to biking paths. And this project was actually built, I just have renders of it right now, but this, this project was built and it's functioning as a central hub for the community to have band, uh, bands play events and then also as a, a bus stop. This one, a direct infrastructure, this, this is probably the most off topic project. I'll just describe it um, because a lot of the projects that you all looked at had to do with modularity. So the premise of this project that we worked on was a person could adjust the design and then that would update cut files that would then be built. So this was another way to give more power to the everyday person to design their own house, set different attributes like, okay, we want a two, bed, two bedrooms or we want one bedroom, we want a big bed, we want a small bed. And then that would start to uh, inform or auto produce uh, construction documents, or in this case, cut files that then can be assembled by the user themselves or a local carpenter. This is more of an example of, so we talked about the construction technique of this digital fabrication using the CNC machine, modularity, producing construction documents. In this case, it's looking at agriculture in the sense of the building materials themselves. So using a rapidly renewable resource like bamboo uh, that actually speaks to the construction method, that that's how it actually uh, incorporates and supports a sort of agricultural uh, effort or system. So there's a direct relationship between the bamboo farm and then this hotel in this case. And then in this case, this, this guest house or hotel is actually uh, connected and used by a permaculture project. So not only are the students that would learn about permaculture uh, for this project, they would actually stay in an ecologically designed project to then learn about those systems and the integration between farming practices and building and how those two can relate to one another. And as we've seen, there's lots of different types of relationships, whether in this case, it's the actual construction method and technique, or in this case, actually the material, versus other methods that we looked at, which is su directly supporting an agricultural effort. This is a real picture of it. The moon is uh, photoshopped in the background, uh, but this is a picture of it actually built using bamboo. Another way to think about infrastructure would be a sacred or ceremonial infrastructure. So similar to social infrastructure, these would be spaces that would hold specific rituals. So I just use this as an example to expand the definition of infrastructure. This is a project, a studio project I worked on uh, to support funerals um, on, in a non-denominational church and more of this ritual um, aspect and actually making death more visible was the premise of this particular project. Okay, so the last project I want to take a look at, which is one that is more directly supporting an agriculture effort an urban farming shed that promotes the transformation of barren cities into productive, beautiful landscapes. So very idealistic premise. Uh, but this is essentially the concept behind this is to provide an urban farming shed for vacant lots that could support uh, urban farming. Now, what are the additional things that you could start to layer into a traditional farming shed that you would use on a project that would make it more useful? So in this project, it said, okay, there's going to be a lot of different use cases for a farming shed. And we want to make it, uh, make a system that you can kind of plug into to adapt to your particular situation. So this is why this frame was developed. And then you could plug in what would be known as fat walls, uh, that could be customized to uh, whatever the particular use case might be. So in this case, there's propagation uh, walls. So these are walls that kind of fit into the system where you can propagate seeds. Then there is a solar thermal uh, wall. So depending on your climate, you might want to warm your shed for the propagation. So this would extend the propagation timeframe by having a solar thermal system. 
So again, if you're in a hot climate, you don't really get that much value out of extending your season, right? So maybe you would put an additional propagation wall, maybe you would put in a different type of function, ones that as a designer you could not think of. Then to couple on the functionality, there's also rainwater catchment. So to collect water for the plants. So you can start to see that we're starting to layer in more and more functionality to something as simple as just a shed. So to look at uh, some of these, how these systems kind of work together, this is what it is kind of all together. And then you can see that it's a framework that you can fit things into. This was the final product here a project um, so this was used in a farming shed they actually were uh, sorry in a vacant lot and uh, this is where they would native trees that they would propagate and then sell and then this is just going through some of the, the construction methodologies so first you build a frame and then you have so you have this main frame and then you start to place different walls into this uh, main frame and then this is it just a little bit more in its context. So you'll notice these are just pots that are on concrete. It can just be moved onto a different uh, situation. So this farming shed is actually movable, can actually go on a, on a truck and, and be moved. And then this is just some in action construction photos and then uh, using the panel. So adding insulation to the roofing panels, again, another construction technique, which would be using cellulose, recycled newspaper as insulation, some night shots of the system. So that's, that's pretty much the project there. Cool. Well, I hope this was helpful just to get an idea of the various types of infrastructure and starting to think about how you can incorporate these types of, I guess, thinking methodologies of layering functionalities and seeing how systems can start to be more integrated with one another. And you can see that even some simple cases, case studies, some simple projects can really start to uh, create a lot of uh, feedback, positive feedback loops that really start to support one another. So this would be really important to start to think about this for your final project. How can you build off of something that's pretty straightforward and simple, and then add in some of that complexity, some of the systems, and how something can increase its functionality, increase its functionality. Cool. Well, I hope this was helpful, and let me know in the comments below what you thought. If you have any ideas that came up during the video, please let me know as we go through. Awesome. Well, have a good day.